So in the beginning, I was talking about replacing the steering column. Um, for now, I think we're going to hold off on that. We have a column shift already, even though it was a three on the tree. Um, you, you know, can I use this as a uh, an automatic transmission shifter? I think we're going to have to do a few modifications, and we can use what we have already because an aftermarket column for this, I can get a universal one for three or four hundred bucks, but I haven't read a lot of good reviews on those. The I did it one that is. Uh, supposed to be a direct fit for this vehicle is like 1200 bucks plus I need a harness adapter I need some other stuff so we're looking like 15 to 1800 dollars to put an aftermarket steering column in the vehicle plus we got to find a steering wheel um, we could be looking two grand so for now we're gonna stick with the uh, factory column um, there's two linkages outside under the hood one was uh for the back position here one is for the toward you position i don't know if that's forward back i don't know there was a like reverse and first on one rail and then you shift to the other one and you would have second and third is this just a three speed yeah three on the tree um so the the linkage under the hood that would give me the most clearance on stuff puts the shifter in this position here. I was planning on using that one out there when I was looking at it, and then I realized that for me driving, that's too close. Um, I, I got big hands. Um, the owner of the vehicle, his hands are probably meatier than mine, even if they're not as big. So he would probably bump the shifter. Since this is a shifter that's meant for manual transmission it's not going to have the detents and the safeties like a modern car would have um, even these cars from the factory that had the automatic transmission i don't know if they actually had uh, the safety where you have to pull on the lever to get it out of park like the modern cars so we don't want any accidental hitting of the shift lever um, so i'm going to end up using the position that's further away from the wheel and I'm going to fix the shifter into that position to where it can't be pulled. Because if I left it like this, I could hook it all up and it would work fine. But if someone jumps in it and pulls on it like you would on a modern vehicle, shifts it down, it's not going to do anything because it's going to be releasing the shifter from the correct selector under the hood. So we're going to leave it in the away from the steering wheel position. Um, I'm either going to pin it or I'm going to weld it out under the hood. And then I have a low car shift uh, shift rod or shift shaft kit. Um, I didn't think a shift rod would work because it because the transmission is sitting underneath me. But when you go under the hood and look, it's almost a direct shot from the shift selector lever on the column down to the transmission. So I did order the rod kit. It comes with a arm that goes on the transmission and a rod and a couple of heim joints and stuff. So let's jump under the hood. Let's weld that piece together and then start building the rest of the project. So this piece here, the center piece is what moves with the shifter. And then there's a little uh, piece of metal that sticks out from this selector and this one. So when it slides back, it engages one, slides back the other way, and engages the other one. I had considered bolting them all together and making it a solid unit. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld this locating tab inside of this slot so that it can't move and come out of there. So this is the old shift linkage. I took it off. This collar comes in the kit. It's a spline collar. Um, you put it on there with the dish facing, facing outward. And then this little uh, kind of weird bolt goes in there. I guess that's a nut. Uh, so <laughs> tighten that up.
And I'm not sure what, okay, I'm going the wrong way here. It shifted all the way down into first when I was loosening up the nut from the original linkage. So tighten up that. And then this other bolt that goes in the middle is kind of like a, a jam nut or jam bolt. We're gonna tighten that up as well. Now we can put this, uh, this arm on here. Now there's a slot in the back of this arm. We're gonna put that towards the transmission. And I've already started mocking this stuff up. Um, and I think this is gonna be my best position. Um, I'm about, In park, I'm just below the nine o'clock position. In first, I'm just behind uh, six o'clock um, by like one tooth. Let's see here. Yeah, I guess it's one tooth back. I think uh, that's not the right socket. I think for the most part, um, as adjustable as this stuff is, you know, as long as you get it close, you can uh, you can always have a little bit of wiggle room and make adjustments afterwards. So we're gonna snug this up. Actually, I'm gonna take that out and I think I might put a little Loctite on it. I'm just gonna put a dab of the medium strength blue Loctite. Um, you may wanna wait until you know exactly where your final position is gonna be before Loctiting this stuff. But I'm pretty sure that this will work for me. And here is the linkage from the kit. Um, it doesn't come fully assembled like this. Some of the pieces are in the box, but there is a collar with two Allen set screws. There is heim joints and they are threaded. Um, this side I have the jam nut tight already. I put a couple of bins in here. Um, one of my issues was uh, my O2 sensor. I put my O2 sensor kind of at a 12 o'clock position on that pipe and this came really close to it. So I didn't want the engine to torque up and hit it. So I put a little bend in it. Let me see here. So maybe a 15 degree bend down here at the bottom. Bent it up. And then to get this piece to clear the firewall, since I wanted to use the uh, that arm that's closest to the firewall, I had to put another bend in it. So I have two bends in it. One angles it away from the transmission comes up and that's just to get me further from the transmission before that transition for the angle to clear the O2 sensor. And then one at the top, leaning it back in towards the firewall. So I'm gonna feed this back up through there and I should probably prepare this first. <laughs> Less things to hold in my hand. So this uh, 5 16 fine thread bolt should fit doesn't fit quite as good in here now since I uh, tightened the nut or the bolt down. Okay, right about there is what I found to be a, an okay spot for me. I'm gonna stick this up through here. And I put a washer on the bolt before this heim joint just to space it out a little bit. Um, it comes in the kit with that washer. Another washer on the other side of the heim joint. And a lock nut. I think that's where I need to be. Um, so there's plenty of adjustment here. I can, uh, I can move this around the further Towards the uh, shift shaft you go, the shorter your shifter throw is gonna be. So if you have an, a column that has an indicator on it and you're trying to match that indicator, you may have to play around with this a little bit, adjust it in and out to try and get your, uh, your distance correct. And you may also have to start out a little higher than I am. Because as it comes down here at a harsher angle, the throw is gonna be a little bit further than when it's up here. 
now that I have that on there, um, I'm going to leave stuff loose until I get everything connected up top, at least the, uh, the jam nuts for the heim joint. And then I also have the two Allen set screws just barely tight. Um, on the final assembly, I'll Loctite those as well. But let's jump up top, assemble the shift linkage to the other side, and then uh, run the shifter through, make sure everything works. If it all works, then we'll come back down here, put some Loctite on stuff, tighten it all down, and the shifter will be done. The kit came with a couple of these black uh, stepped washers. They're plastic. Um, those will sit down into the, uh, the arm here. So I'm going to get us set up a little bit here. We got to stick a bolt through the heim joint with the washer on it. The larger washer goes behind that, kind of sandwiching that heim joint in there. Plastic washer. Another plastic washer on the back side. Another washer behind that. Now I'm going to run the, uh, the shifter through the range. So that there is park. Make sure I'm not hitting anything that would prevent it from going fully into park. It's on the detent there, so that's good. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Second, first. No. Park. Reverse. Neutral. I guess that would be fourth, third, second, first. So that was fairly easy to install. And by using the old steering column and just welding that linkage, we saved a couple thousand dollars. Um, the kit itself was 60 to 80 bucks. Um, so not too bad. But if you're on a budget, it, it could be a, a little tight. Um, we put the bend at the top to make it clear the firewall and it also put the heim joint at a better angle, put it kind of parallel with the shift linkage. Down below I put the small bend in that rod for one to get it a little bit further away from the O2 sensor. Um, I still had a couple inches of room, I just didn't want anything to happen. And then it also put that heim joint at a better angle. Um, I think that my adjustment is good so far. Once we get out and drive it a few times I'll know for sure. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. I'll get to them as fast as I can. If you want to see the rest of the build, we got a few more things to do, then subscribe. Click the bell so you're notified when that stuff comes out. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate you guys sticking along for the ride. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.